Welcome to Opal STV. I'm in London together with Benjamin Ball from Benjamin Ball Associates. Benjamin runs a very interesting business. Benjamin, please explain to us what does Benjamin Ball do? Benjamin Ball Associates, the way we put it is we help companies pitch, present and persuade. So what does that mean? Very often when people are either fundraising, when they are, when funds are fundraising, when companies are raising money, when they're talking to investors, or they're trying to sell something, we help them through that process. And what does that mean? I mean, I've got a background as a corporate financier. So when I was a corporate financier, this was all about what's the investment narrative? How do you make the documents look interesting? And ultimately, how do you coach the team? So they look impressive, they engage with people when they're talking to them. So the work we do there always starts with, you know, what, who are the audience you're trying to pitch to? How do you get a story that is right for that audience at that time? And then how do you make the documents look good? How do you make them so, whether if they're standalone documents or if they're documents you're using in pitch meetings, they work well, they're engaging, they're interesting, they tell the story. And then finally, and most importantly, the team. When you work with the team, how do they run those meetings? How do they start? How do they make a great impression? And all of this is through coaching with working on camera, like, like the stuff we're doing today. Uh, that way people can see themselves, they can get a sense of how good they are, and we can show them techniques, tried and tested techniques, which just make a huge difference. So Benjamin, tell me, what are the mistakes that you see that fund managers are doing and marketing people when they're out there trying to raise assets? That's a good question. And I think I'd break it up into a number of different areas if you look at what, what people do wrong. And interesting, and all of this is reinforced by the feedback we get from investors when we ask them you know, what, they, what they don't like seeing. First area, I think, is the story, the investment story, the investment narrative. Too many funds go out there with just a generic thing. You know, we are a long, short, something, something. We are a CTA, da, 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 da. It's very important that you find out what makes your fund different, what makes you distinctive, what makes you stand out. And interesting, that's often the hardest thing to do. You know, we did some work with a Russian fund a while ago. And uh, you know, great, great people, uh, the hedge, hedge fund in Russia, really great people, really good performance. Only after working with them for a while did we discover, had a bit of research which said they were the best performing fund in, that, in their sector. So suddenly that transformed the whole story. It was about, okay, we're the best performing fund. Let me explain why we were the best performing fund and how we're going to continue to be the best performing fund. The whole story was around that one little bit of information that we found completely transformed the success of their fundraising. Second part is about the uh, is to do with um, documentation, you know, making documents easy to read, interesting. So when someone picks it up and looks at it, the the, the story leaps out at you, and it makes it you know uh, makes it engaging and interesting. You know, it's so easy to be trying to pack a lot of information in there, but without thinking about what is the, what is the reader really interested in, what what they want to do. And I guess the third set of the mistakes people make is around the way they run pitch meetings when they meet people maybe for the first time maybe for the second time and you know as one investor said to me once last thing i want to do i'd never want to be sold to <laughs> they want to understand they want to have a relationship because so often when you're meeting an investor you know it's a bit like a first date it's a bit like you want to work with this person for years and years and years you don't want them to buy into it right then. You just want them to get interested, to believe, to trust, and getting, making sure all those things are right. Probably the most important thing in that first pitch meeting. We can look at the story for the first time and see, you know, is it interesting? Is it exciting? How does it compare with the other stories we've seen? We can be tough on people. Uh, we have no vested interest in you know, managing, your, um, uh, managing your fundraising or anything like that. So it's just, you know, we can say, look, that's rubbish. Let's, let's, let's do that again. Um, and also, because we've been doing this for a long time, you know, we are very, very good at helping people you know, 
really working out, helping people blossom. You know, cut, you know, you know a lot of fund, a lot of fund managers are are you know, they're highly highly expert at fund managing. Sometimes don't like fundraising very much. Don't like marketing, and we show them ways that it makes it much more comfortable, much more interesting. So the whole process is 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 better and therefore more effective. How important is the first impression, the first meeting? First impressions are critical. And a lot of that is because of just the way the human brain works. I, mean, I don't know whether you've ever read the, I think, Kaufman book, you know, the, um, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. He describes it beautifully. You know, the human brain has two thinking processes, one of which is the instant reaction type, and the other part is the logical thinking type. We think all investors are you know, very logical, very consistent, but they are swayed by you know, the, their first, you know, the, that instant reaction they get. So if you start a meeting very badly, you have a lot of work to do to get over that. But if you start a meeting well, then it's much easier to, to continue that meeting well. And if you think first meetings are all critical because the last thing you want is your first meeting to be your last meeting. You know, in, you have to have a good start, a good first meeting, so that somebody wants to see you, you know, as simple as they want to see you again. So, some of the things that people should be, should be aware of in, uh, in, in first meetings. I mean, it's, it could be down to, you know, what you say in those opening, few opening lines to connect with somebody. Uh, it could be about the research you do beforehand, so you really know who it is you're meeting. And it could also be that you are showing interest in the person that you are talking, you're pitching to. So it's about, you know, this meeting is as much about them and their portfolio and how your fund might help their portfolio as much as it is as about how brilliant you are at managing money and could manage money for them. So all those things. And then again, as I said before, every single person is different. So, you know, it could be eye contact. It could be the way you work together as a team. It could be the way you use materials. All these little things can make a massive difference to you know, how much people like you. And there's a, you know, there's a great bit of research done by Professor Amy Cuddy at Harvard Business School. She looked actually looked at um, people raising venture capital in the States. And she, looked, she wanted to work out you know, what made people successful. And she, managed, she measured people on two, two, two areas, one of which was you know, how competent were they, you know, how good were they, what was their track record like, things like that. And on the other side, she looked at how likable they were, how much did they engage, how did they connect. In order to be successful, you had to be both competent and likable. They were equally important. And I think people very often underestimate how important it is to be likable uh, in, in making those impressions in a pitch meeting. So Benjamin, when you're saying people should work on their narrative, they should take care of their first impression, mm. and they should be likable, I think everybody is already trying to do that. Uh, but you know, listening to you is, I think what you bring to the table is you know, you're that independent, unbiased third party. And I would reckon that that sometimes can make a big difference. Maybe tell me more about that. or tell us more examples mm -hmm. of your work. I think you're absolutely right. Every, you know, everyone thinks they are quite good at this. But it's also, a, it's also an uncomfortable process to go through for, for a lot of people, you know, that self-analysis. Are you really as good as you think? But you, know, you look at people like um, you know, FTSE 100 CEOs, you know, me, you know, the, 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 the other sort of people that we coach as well. You know, some of the CEOs we work with, every single year, two, three times a year, We'll go in there and help them before every results announcement, before any big speech. You know, they're constantly getting advised because communi you know, that, that communications and the way you get communications across can make such a difference. Uh, you know, I think the days of the gifted amateur just going in there and you know, telling them how good they are, that's long gone. You, know, you need that extra edge with everything you do. Now, uh, you know, if, if you know in your investment strategy, if you could get an extra five or ten percent, you know, better performance out of your fund, you know, you, you'd be you'd be leaping at it. You'd be paying paying the uh, information providers a fortune for that. But this is about getting that sort of edge in pitch meetings, so that you win more meetings, you engage more people, uh, you know, you're more successful at fundraising.
So Benjamin, how do you know that your advice actually works? Yeah, so, I mean, like a lot of marketing services, it's incredibly difficult to measure. We can't do controlled tests on it. But a, a couple of illustrations. We did this, uh, we were working on a, with a Finnish company's Capital Markets Day about a year and a half ago. And there was no new information at all, but we just re helped them retell their story in a much better way. Next day, it put 10% on the share price. So a you know, billion dollar company put 10% on the share price just because they presented the same information in a new way. That's a sort of nice illustration of how well it works. I guess the other great illustration is that our clients come back to us again and again and again. You know, for many companies, we've been working with them for many, many years. Every time they've got an investor day, um, they come to us. Every time they are um, selling a company or raising money for a company, they ask us to help the management team of those companies you know, to look more impressive. They see the, the competitive advantage it gives them by having a well-trained team with a good story and who do you know, perform well in pitch meetings. Now, Benjamin, we've gone over a lot of things. Just summing it up, what are, let's say, the five or six key points that you think fund managers, portfolio managers, marketing people should focus on in our industry when they go out trying to raise assets? Yeah, I guess when, you know, when you're out fundraising, when you're out talking to investors, there are a number of things that you need to get right. And these are not just in pitch meetings. These are at conferences. These are, uh, you know, if you get a speaking opportunity, any time, same things come up over and over again. You know, what is special about your fund? What is unique? What is different? There are too many Me Too funds out there. You need to stand out from the crowd. How can you do that? Second, the power of a really good elevator pitch, the way you can describe yourself in five seconds, in 10 seconds, in 20 seconds, in 30 seconds. Getting that right, very important. How you connect and engage with somebody, very important. It's not about you telling the story. It's about you connecting with someone so that somebody wants to work with you. Somebody trusts you, somebody believes in you. That's very important. It's about being, being consistent in your messaging, in your storyline, keeping it very simple, keeping it very clear, keeping it consistent. You know, as the markets go up and down, you are still telling the same story many, many years on. And you have got within your story those things that investors need to listen to, need to hear. And finally, probably the most important thing is making sure that you are focused on the right audience at the right time. It's not just that one story that you're just telling everyone at the same time, but if you're talking to a family office, you're talking to a big institution, you're doing something, how have you adapted that so you know exactly who you're talking to and making what you say exactly right for them? Those are probably the five things that would uh, you know, underpin a successful, um, you know, really clear, successful story.